Hello, Hello and, and welcome, welcome to, to the presentation, presentation of, uh, of the uh, 3.0 update of Shadow World that released uh, last week. Um, so right now I'm, uh, I'm just playing around with uh, fast tracing in Shadow World. Off. Here we go. Bit smoother. Okay, so three point zero update. Uh, one of the new features is uh, that uh, the world generation is uh, is now being a bounded world by default, which means that uh, instead of generating a infinite world, you're not generating a, a defined size. So yeah, here I'm uh, generating a 16 by 16 kilometer map. Can change uh, settings here. Config bounded world. If I disable it, it's going to generate the world under the camera. bit faster okay so right now I'm generating an infinite world if I want to generate a bounded world I just have to toggle this uh, little boolean here okay so bounded world by default Um, there's a, a new way to visualize the collisions. I've changed, uh, changed it a little bit. It's uh, a bit more readable. Now you have a grid instead of a, a full color uh, visualization. It's a bit, a bit clearer. Let's get to PCG compatibility. So right now I'm gonna change map this one. So I'm gonna disable Shadows. Okay, so right now I have a PCG volume. I'm gonna show the, uh, the volume here. Okay, so I have a PCG volume. Not sure it's gonna be extremely visible on the stream, but uh, in uh, within this volume I have uh, I have uh, this is PCG instance. In this instance, I now have a Shadow World sampler. Shadow World sampler allows us to, uh, to sample the, uh, the Shadow World underneath. It's really simple. You can change the settings here. So you have a couple modes. This uh, Shadow World sampler is like a is similar to uh, static mesh sampler and surface sampler. It's actually doing uh, those two things combined, and you have so you can select the mode you want to use here. So you can use poisson sampling. You can use the uh, surface sampler. Um, okay. Generates um, the PCG compatibility relies on the fact that you're generating collisions uh, under your PCG volume. 
So to generate collisions under your PCG volume, you just have to, uh, you can just, uh, for instance, you place your PCG volume, you can just add a, a component SW, like Shadow World, SW collisions. If you do this, you're going to generate collisions underneath. You see, I've already done it here. If I add, uh, can we do it? SW collisions. So now my uh, my PCG volume is going to generate collisions. You see the yellow area on Denis. Is the advantage is that the collisions are actually doing readbacks from the GPU to the CPU. So you can uh, you can guarantee that you have enough information to place the vegetation using the uh, the collision readback. Okay, so PCG compatibility. It's pretty cool. I haven't spent a lot of time playing around it, but it's uh, it's fairly efficient. If you use the surface sampler mode here, it's, uh, it should be uh, faster than using the uh, the other alternatives because the three other options are actually creating a dynamic mesh underneath behind the scene, while the surface sampler is actually uh, using directly the readbacks uh, from the. Uh, from the uh, collisions. Okay, uh, Shadow World, well, uh, one of the advantages is that uh, you have uh, editable terrain. So if I, uh, for instance, edit my terrain, it's going to completely change my world. And I noticed that if you, you want a PCG to update, uh, right now you have to change the seed in order to refresh the cache. So it's not going to reuse the, uh, it's going to reuse some old information. And all of this can happen uh, during gameplay, so you don't have to do it in editor, it can happen in the real time. So that's uh, PCG compatibility. Um, as you can see, the default mode now is now is bounded world for every uh, map generated. So you uh, you're not uh, you can change the the ma the size of the map at runtime if you want. Um, there's also uh, an improved uh, readback of the uh, various uh, size of the world. Okay, so right now the world is generating on uh, tiles, and those uh, tiles are in uh, in a virtual cache. And there's now proper readback of the various uh, dimensions of this uh, cache generated. So if you vi you can visualize the bounds of the world, and you can actually see that it's uh, following the uh, the proper elevation of the terrain. So one of the benefits is that you have uh, improved cooling, cooling of the uh, of the world. So if I'm put here and I freeze rendering and look back, you can see all the world has been removed, which should uh, generate a drastic uh, performance improvements regarding uh, shadow casting. You can see the partitions here being uh, properly 
generated with the uh, eight read back. It's getting actually fairly close to the uh, virtual eight field mesh uh, within Unreal Engine, except here it's a full landscape with collisions and uh, runtime interactions, runtime generation. Okay, so we did uh, bounded worlds, PCG compatibility, new uh, collision mesh visual visualization. Um, yes, one uh, one thing also is that uh, the world now is generated in uh, multiple sub meshes. So what we had previously on uh, Shadow World is that uh, each LOD was a single mesh, which meant that uh, uh, you couldn't really uh, curl removed uh, sub, some sub parts. Each LED was a single mesh, a single large mesh, which meant that uh, if you wanted to remove a, a part of the mesh, you had to remove it all. You couldn't remove just a simple part of it. But right now, it's actually uh, multiple sub meshes that are following us around, and you can remove some part of it. So if you check right now the uh, lowest LED version. You can see there's actually eight submesh by eight submesh per LED. And it's actually the case for every LED. So you can call each of this. It's a bit like a traditional landscape uh, component, except uh, you have uh, much less components per LEDs. But right now you have uh, 64 LEDs on this uh, per, uh, per clip map level. And you can call uh, any of it. The split mesh generation, you can actually uh, disable it under uh, advanced tab, shadow performance, split clip mesh. And if you remove this, you can actually see the older version of the uh, of the bounds. You can see much larger bounds, which much less efficient killing. Right now what you're seeing is actually the bounds of the uh, collision meshes which are completely irrelevant to rendering because they're not rendering, any, rendering anything but you can see the large mesh here is actually an entire clip map level and if I split the mesh I have sub meshes, 8 sub meshes by 8 sub meshes which can all be removed in the rendering to improve performance That's all those meshes that gets removed with curling. Okay, cache uh, speed mesh generation curling. Um, yes, there's been a modification in the uh, collision management. Previously, uh, all the pawns were automatically uh, teleported on top of the terrain uh, in case they were falling. Right now, if you want uh, your pawn to not fall under the map, because it's perfectly possible that you're loading the map, the map is getting generated, and your pawn is falling before the collision is ready. Uh, now, each pawn has to have the SW collision component, which actually means that uh, this actor is going to generate collisions. And if you want to prevent it from falling underneath, you have to toggle this boolean here, prevent falling under terrain. So what's, that's what's prevent, for instance, my character here. If I were to spawn it under the terrain, just cast tab by falling, the collision is going to be generated and I'm going to be teleported on top of it. And it was a default behavior before, now yeah, you have to toggle this uh, boolean. It was a request from uh, from users. So now it's perfectly possible to do it.
Okay, PCG, Bandage Worlds, Improved Killing, Improved Performance. That's it. That's all of the new updates. And I think it's going to be pretty cool. It's a really nice improvement for Shadow